I think this is going to be an introduction to all the footwork that we have in Kendo. There will be more, but I really hope you enjoy it. Welcome to a new Kendo Tips video. If you're new here, my name is Jose. I'm a Yondang in Kendo. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce, not introduce, but I'm going to talk about the three main footworks we have in Kendo. And of course, some possible applications. Before I keep going with this video though, I wanna tell you that please consider subscribing to this channel if you enjoyed these videos. And if you have any questions Kendo related, you can catch me on stream live Sundays, 3.30 p.m. We watch some Kendo videos, talk about Kendo, grow and get better together. Anyways, as you know, there's three main types of footworks that we use in Kendo, Ayumiyashi, Okuriyashi, and Suriyashi. First, I did a little bit of research on the description of each of those and the things that I found online are a little bit lacking. I found some definitions from the Kendo dictionary. I'll leave a link below and also in the glossary that is in the book, one of my favorite books, Kendo Approaches to All Levels, that I will also leave a link below. And again, the information is a little bit, I mean, just read them. I think it's lacking and I think I could add a little bit more to it, be more specific. Ayumi actually does resemble walking, one main difference is that you don't tilt as you move forward, your whole body always facing your opponent, and you don't want to be dipping up and down as you walk. It's a way for us to cover a little bit more distance in a more controlled manner that we would do, for example, in Suriyashi, which I'll talk about in a minute. Okuriyashi, I do want to give a little bit more attention because I feel it's essential to our growth in Kendo. It is very important to understand and learn because it's not only a way for us to move forward and back, but also a way to be back in Kamai after each step. So you're always ready after you take one step. Okuriyashi is done by pushing with the left leg or the back leg to make the right leg move forward and the upper body, and then the right leg pulls the rest of the body, bringing the foot back into Kamai, bringing the back foot back into Kamai. That's like the basics of it, like the, the, the simplest way to explain it. But I think this explanation may cause a little bit of confusion or misunderstanding. So let me clear it up a little bit. The transition between that push and pull, it's very important to understand. So when you don't have this transition clear, you get an off step where you don't have enough power to come in and you drag, you either drag the leg, you tilt the body or you dip the body. So let me just show you real quick. I know that most people don't like it when I show some Kendo stuff on regular clothes, but I'm wearing pants for a purpose. If you hear push and pull and you think Fumikiri and Fumikomi, you are correct. I think the concept when we use Fumikiri and Fumikomi resembles what we do in Okuriyashi. And as a matter of fact, it will be a transition. That's the most common transition to go from Okuriyashi to Suriyashi. But what does this overlapping mean that I'm talking about? When you're pushing with the left leg, you want to keep putting pressure forward until the moment the left foot leaves the floor the right leg starts pulling forward at the moment when it touches the floor until the left leg or the rear leg, it's ready to push again. So it depends on how deep or short your step might be. You may have the situation where the left leg is pushing, the right leg it's landing and it starts pulling as the moment that the left leg is leaving the floor. And then you have a situation where like, for example, in Fumikomi, where you do a very long step where the left foot is pushing and leaves the ground and then the right leg doesn't start pulling until it touches. So you have maybe have a little bit of air time, but it's a very separated motion. Remember that after we do Okuriyashi, we have to land back on Kamaya and be ready, which is one of the main advantages of Okuriyashi itself. Now, it's very important that you learn to do good Okuriyashi 
in a short distance, long distance, fast, slow, changing the timings because it will give you so much more opportunities during Keiko. At, you can create pressure, you can change the timing, you can go forward, you can go back to maybe bait the opponent, you can dodge an attack. There's so many, maybe I should make a video specific on that. That would be interesting, I think. I think it goes without saying, you gotta practice Okuriashi and you gotta be fluid and let's say fluent on using it in different ways. Ayomiyashi we do use to cover long distances, but it's different from Suriyashi. So Suriyashi is very similar to Okuriyashi, but it's not the same. There's, I feel that a lot of times people tend to have like choppy Okuriyashi because they try to mimic Okuriyashi, but just do it faster and then think that that's Suriyashi. And it's a little bit more than that. So I'm gonna show you a picture that I got from, again, Cam the Approaches to a Level, link below. And you can see here difference between Okuriashi and Suriyashi. And Suriyashi has an extra step because it keeps pushing. So Suriyashi, it's continuous. Suriyashi doesn't stop. The way we stop is that we transition from Suriyashi back into Okuriashi. Now, what, what's interesting about this whole thing with the foot landing parallel to the forward foot is that it's not necessarily that we're pushing ourselves to land there but because we're creating momentum depending how fast you're going the faster you're going i think the more evident it is you're bringing the momentum and the left leg is coming with energy and power you're not working against it and it lands there to push again to keep the momentum going As a matter of fact i'm going to try to add up a little video but sometimes when you find somebody doing Suriyashi fast. If you slow it down, you're gonna see that the right foot or the leading foot is going to leave the floor before the left leg gets there. One thing that you want to make sure you don't do is that you do not work against the energy of your body. You do not, you don't want to cross. It's not regular walking, you're not running. You're doing similar motion than a Kuriyashi, but you're being a little bit more fluid. Listen, if you have any questions about this or anything kind of related, you can pass by the stream. Sunday is 3.30 p.m. You can ask me live and we can talk about it. We can make a discussion about it, but I will be making more videos exploring the details on all these footworks. Main thing you want to know is that we use Suriyashi as a way to create speed, create momentum to go after a technique to either show Sutemi or to make sure that you have a safe distance where you can turn around and then face your opponent and re-engage into the fight with a little bit of safer distance. So you avoid your opponent possibly chasing you and when you turn around, you know, get hit right away. Anyways, I hope you find this useful. If you did, please consider subscribing to this channel. Again, hope to see you on Sundays, 3.30 p.m. for the live stream. But in the meantime, I'll catch you in the next one. And thank you very much for watching. Please stay safe.